Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at Mansouri to head to the workshop to take a look at one of the craziest cars I have ever seen, let alone been lucky enough to drive. Today, we're taking a first ever look at Le Mansouri, their take on the new Ford GT and how crazy and radical is this thing? Completely rebodied on the outside, new materials, new styles. We're going to take a look through the outside and the in. It makes more power, it makes more noise, and we're going to pull it on out of the workshop to go through it in detail and then for me to jump on board to have a first drive in this. Let's check out Le Mansouri. I think we're going to need a moment to take in all of the details, have a look at what they've done with the carbon fibre for the first time ever here, look at how wide this car is. But first, let's hear it then, coming into life, Le Mansouri. to say there's a lot to take in when it comes to this. I think that's probably an understatement. We'll kick off with a walk around to go through all of the changes on the outside before seeing what they've done as well to the interior of Le Mansouri. The name Le, literally in French, the word for the, the Mansouri. I think some inspiration there from a certain Italian hypercar perhaps, but also a nod towards the cars racing past. Remember the Ford GT's success at the 24 hour race in France as well. With the sun out on it, look at this paint color. It's called Blurion Race. It is a multi-layer blue paint that almost looks chrome in its appearance and then finished with the exposed carbon fibre that Mansouri are so famous for. And in particular, you'll notice this very large square weave, checkerboard weave that we have in the exposed sections as well. The entire bodywork is completely replaced. It is wider than standard and radically different from the normal design. Of course, you have the shape of the Ford GT with those flying buttresses, but every single panel is different. Even the headlights are different. They've been changed from the normal design to this twin eyes on each side, almost indented inside the bodywork. You've got all the flicks and canards, the exposed carbon sections around the front. Of course, this is all the cooling that comes up through this, which I alluded to earlier. This is a new thing that Mansori have created with a milled mold to push the carbon into that gives this 3D effect like the skin on a shark that comes from those air ducts around towards the A pillars. As we come around towards the side, the front is about a centimetre wider on each side. The rear about two and a half wider. The skirts have had to be substantially widened, I think about six or seven centimetres. We'll see more of that when we open up the doors. On the roof, you've got the snorkels. These are working snorkels for airflow through towards the engine. Back there, it's the 3.5 litre twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6. Power has been taken up from the standard 656 horsepower and 746 newton meters with a software tune up in this car to 710, over 50 horsepower more and torque up to 840, almost 100 newton meters more. That's gonna be quite interesting to experience on the road. And of course, a totally new exhaust system. Typically it would have a twin round tailpipe in about this area. Now it has this triple design. Mansori always creates these completely different exhaust designs. Obviously that's sitting beneath this huge fixed rear wing. It's no longer active, but it sits out proud at the back, rather akin to a GTE race car, like of course the Ford GT LM, for example. And then down here, everything carbon. The full body is actually carbon fiber. You've got those aero flicks around the side. This is crazy. This is, it, it's such a, an intricate design to take in all of the details. For example, how the airflow manages around here. And in fact, that's how much wider it is. This is roughly in line with the standard body shape 
with the cooling uh, radiators that you have inside and then the extra width allowing more airflow through. Now if we come round we can take a look at the interior because the standard 4 GT interior is pretty plain to begin with. It's a focused race car. If I open up the doors though which open outwards as so inside here pretty much every single surface has been changed and redone. The new door sills with the Le Mansori embroidery, the seats have actually changed as well. You've got these openings around the sides of the bolstering. They've changed the style up here as well. Still the carbon fiber uh, bucket seat style though. New trims, new materials with the perforation. Even under here, under the floor mat, the Mansori on the carbon tub. We've got Mansori pedals on the movable pedal box. They've changed the steering wheel to give it the carbon fiber rather than Alcantara. They've painted some of the interior trim panels. They've actually added a new piece to the doors. Normally you wouldn't have anything here but we've got the leather, the inserts of the air vents, completely retrimmed from top to bottom. But the biggest change that they've made is that the start button is no longer here. It is now up on the roof. Fighter jet style up on the top. Always a very cool thing on a car like this. It's crazy. I'm going to take a seat in there in a moment and bring this into life before taking it on out. We've got 21 inch wheels all around, the white pinstripe, white brake, brake calipers painted on them as well. This is, this is absolutely in a different league of crazy. So let me come around then and uh, start this up from the inside to, I guess, get ready for the experience. So carefully does this because this is basically a brand new car that we need to be super, super careful with. So, butter on the roof, let's bring this into life. Oh yes, you feel more of the vibrations instantly. It feels more aggressive than my car. Oh, okay. It's time to experience Le Mansouri. I've got myself comfortable, of course, mostly familiar from my car. I've only ever driven one other Ford GT, which was one of the factory press cars back in the early days. We have an entirely new steering wheel as well, new hand grips, new shift paddles I've noticed. But let's go into gear, seven speed dual clutch, and uh, head on out, of course, immediately feeling a little bit familiar, just conscious of quite how large this car is. Very, very wide, very, very long as well. We do have the lift system. We can also pop it down into track mode, but we will not be doing that uh, on the road just now. So here we are, the only one of these that exists at the moment in the world, the first of the six, and I'm at the wheel of it. So lift system up, perfect. Raises the nose almost instantly. The car has a very, very clever hydraulic suspension system. Lift automatically back down at 40 kilometers per hour. As we come out of the town, I'm gonna to put it into manual to get a little bit more of the revs from the car. Do you know what? Even being back at the wheel of a Ford GT, it just instantly feels so pinpoint precise, even though it's a big, car. The steering feel is fantastic. Oh wow! This is just amazing. A beautiful day, perfect roads, and a brand new Uman oh Sorry, I was gonna say a brand new Ford GT, but it's not even just a Ford GT. By the way, we do have a valve control in the uh, little pouch at the moment, so you can press off and it will get, oh sorry, on, turn on the valve. Yes, and there we go. It gets almost silent. That's actually, there's no valve control in the standard car. That's completely silent. Or we can press off and it gets a little bit louder again, which is exactly how we're gonna keep it for this drive. Back to the edge of town. That means turn this back into sport mode, back into manual, drop some gears. We got a bit more temperature into the car now. Yeah. 
about maybe 1,300 or so, I think, of this shape for GT in total. There were about 4,500 of the previous shape. But if you want something exclusive, you can't get more exclusive, really, than one of only six of these that will be made in total. Six, just six that Mansouri will make. I've been told I need to drive a little bit harder. So let's get some more noise out of this. Sorry, Carbonado, I pulled over the event door and uh, it spat fireballs out of the back. So let's take a little listen then to what this sounds like. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. I've stepped out for a moment, of course, the car is now parked in track mode, which drops it by five centimeters, about two inches, which is why the tires are so snug inside the arches. But listen to even the idle sound that this makes. It's so raw, it's race car, it's a proper race car. And I mean, if you saw this thing, you would literally think it's driven straight out of the Le Mans circuit, and it is now here, parked at the side of the road with normal cars driving by. And then we have this rather bonkers extreme vehicle. I mean, just look at this. Look at all of the details. Look quite how low it is down to the ground when it's down in track mode. And there are some really cool, obviously, features integrated into the car. This is an air vent. Air comes out from the inside of the tail lights. The radiators here actually send the air back up through the buttress in towards the engine bay. Now you get the extra air cooling in through the roof snorkels as well in towards that engine, which has had the tops painted to match the exterior. It's all, it's all just, I mean, it, it's crazy. It's the definition of crazy. I think back on we go then, handbrake off, back into drive, in fact, back into manual. It's just the extreme raw craziness. back here at Mansori, currently in the normal ride height. You have to have the engine running if you want to keep it in track and held down because it uses the engine connected to the hydraulic actuators to lock it down into track. But all of the details, I mean, it's hard to touch on absolutely everything. Of course, the front end is completely reworked. The car is about 10 centimeters longer as well due to, of course, the front nose and also the fixed wing that sticks out over towards the rear. But we've got the louvres on the arches. We've obviously got all of the exposed carbon. This design is completely different to house their new LED headlights that they've installed to give the car that new face, that new look. Down towards the front, we still have the airflow that comes through. We've got various openings. They've put in some running lights down here, integrated into that lower section beneath that curved round front nose. You've got the two flicks. You've got the end plates. Obviously, this guides air around that front profile. As we come round, what else do we have? I suspect the mirror arms are possibly the original part, and maybe the A-pillars, which are part of the integrated tub, the carbon tub uh, that you have in 
inside the car. Obviously, this is literally the monocoque that you have uh, integrated within it with the roll cage and everything already pre-installed. Carbon fibre fuel filler cap. In fact, the whole bodywork is carbon fibre, obviously. I said we'd talk about the doors, so we'll go to those in a second. There's this double layer to the rear wing, attached from above, the swan neck arm style always gives more surface area underneath to be used for downforce and then if i open up the doors so that you can see quite how much wider this is in fact that's almost the normal body line it comes out a little bit further but this is how much it's extended so if we open this up look at this look at how much wider it is out here in fact with the visual carbon and the gloss black separation that is one chunky piece of carbon fiber and then the interior this interior it's just been completely transformed into an almost oem like interior with lots of unique details still with a black dash topper so that you don't get any crazy reflections off the glass but all the materials the finish is lovely they've mimicked these original cutouts that you have in the backrest also into the side bolsters uh, of the seats but all the finish i particularly like the door sills, the entry sills that you have with the embroideries and the flashes of the exterior blue that you have painted onto the carbon door card. Of course in here you have the carbon central tunnel uh, as it comes as part of the tub, the pedal box that moves when you pull this lever to pull that back towards the driver. We've got the key just here if I reach in. Not necessarily the most spectacular key for the Ford GT, but it's keeping it in line, uh, keeping all the electronics in line with other Ford models. So when it comes to the light switches, or for example, the lock unlock and the window switches, they always went with those remaining true to the Ford brand and just kept the driving dynamic stuff. For example, what's on the steering wheel, unique about the GT where you have all of the controls for your driving mode selector, things like your indicators, your wipers, everything uh, all through the steering wheel. So you don't have to take your hands off the wheel at all. I really like those shifters as well they're quite nice um, coming up a little bit higher up towards the top and even small details like this piping that you have across the very front edge really really very very nice so this is without doubt one very cool piece of kit we close down the door noticeably heavier than the standard door and i mean it's just look at it le mansori what an amazing opportunity to come today to even be able to see this let alone to be able to drive it and experience the sheer insanity of a Ford GT on major steroids. Now I kind of, I think in some ways, run out of words to describe this kind of thing. It's crazy, it's extreme, it's bonkers, it's exclusive, it's wild, it's out there. I think the car does the talking. Lumansori, so what an awesome opportunity to be able to share this. I have had an amazing, amazing amazing time but i think for today that is going to be all thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>